We are going live now. Okay, we are live. My chest, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, a very good evening to all my guests, participants and presenters and welcome to HELPS SPM Revision Seminar Online. And today's subject would be on additional mathematics. Before I move forward to the seminar, I have a certain house rules for us all to follow. Firstly, for those who are not presenting, Please mute your mics and do not display your webcam videos throughout the session. This is to minimize distraction during the forum. Secondly, for those who would like to ask questions to the speaker, please post your questions on the chat box so our moderator can read them out during the Q&A session. Again, if you have any questions, please post it in the Q&A chat box so that our moderator can read it out at the end of the session. All right. With that being said, <coughs> let me introduce our speaker for today. Her name is Ms. Rani, and she is from the ACE department in Health University, and she is an expert in additional mathematics. All right. So Ms. Rani, the floor is yours. Selamat datang semua murid-murid. Okey. Saya Cikgu Rani akan mengendalikan sesi matematik tambahan selama 10 minggu berturut-turut pada setiap hari Rabu jam 8 malam sampai 9 malam. So, bagi para pelajar yang takut dengan subjek matematik tambahan, jangan risau. Cikgu Rani ada tips untuk memilih dan menjawab soalan SPM matematik tambahan. So, kaitira yang penting is mulai hari ini, para pelajar kena mula memberi luangkan masa selama 30 minit setiap hari untuk menjawab 3 sampai 5 soalan uh, matematik tambahan adakah dia dari buku rujukkan atau soalan-soalan tahun-tahun lepas tak kisah. So cuba soalan selama 30 minit setiap hari. And I'm very sure kamu semua boleh lulus perpisahan matematik tambahan. Okay. So di sini saya also ingin ambil kesempatan memberitahu saya akan mempaparkan soalan-soalan topik perbincangan Selam, setiap minggu sehari atau dua sebelum sesi uh, talian dijalankan. So bagi minggu ini kita akan bermula dalam masa sekejap lagi sebelum tu uh, saya ingin mengulas tentang cara memilih dan menjawab soalan matematik tambahan. So saya akan meneruskan sesi ini dalam bahasa Inggeris. Okay, the format of exam paper for your final additional mathematics SPM. There are two papers. Paper one consists of 80% of the overall marks and there are 25 subjective questions in this paper one. Out of these 25, half of it is from form four topic and another half is from form five topic. The marks distribution for this topic, if you can see, there will be one question with two marks, there will be 10 questions with three marks, and four questions with 12 marks. What type of question will be asked in paper one? There will be 10 direct to the point question, okay? And there will be 10 application question, and as well five thinking or higher order thinking skill, or we call it Kabat question. So for those students who are weak, how many questions should I answer just to pass this paper? So for your information, just to pass a paper, you need to answer at least 10 to 11 questions. And according to Pakar Guru Mathematik Tambahan, 
Vicky have advised you the topic that you can choose is the seven topic that is easy to score. They are function, quadratic equation, quadratic function, AP and GP, arithmetic progression and geometry progression, statistic, uh, you have uh, circular measurement and geometry coordinate. So, and one more, linear law. So these are the seven topic. If you can answer all the question in this seven topic that comes out in paper one, you completely and correctly, you have passed the paper. Okay, so what about paper two? So paper two consists of 100% of the marks where part A, B and C you can see the distribution of mark. Part A carry 40%, part B is 40%, and part C is 20%. According to the expert of mathematics, Tambahan, they asked the student to start with part C. Please do answer part C, which carry 20%. You only need to answer two questions, and then you go to part P, where you spend about an hour to answer at least four questions. But for a weak student, you might not be able to answer four questions. So try to choose at least two questions from part B. And then finally, you come to part A, spend about an hour. For a weak student, just answer two questions. So two questions from each part, and you have passed your paper too. With the overall marks, you have passed your admits. That is the advice given for those who just want to pass. For those who want to score, do more practice from now onward until there are four months from now onward. So please spend at least 30 minutes every day to do at least three to five questions of your past year or your book or any type of books that you're using. Guarantee you will do it. OK, what type of question that will be asked in paper two? In part A, these are the six topics they will test on. So it can be a direct question. It can be an application question. So you can see the various type of question here. And in part B, since you need to answer four questions. So for a weak student, which question will be easier to answer? Is those are direct question like linear law, vector or circular measurement. So if you're just going to answer two questions, please choose these two. Maybe to be on the safe side, just have another question to solve. And how about part C? Part C, the question will be asked from these four topics only. And motion along straight line is the topic normally student doesn't touch. So you have three questions, which is index, number, linear programming and solution of triangle. So the easiest two topic will be index number and solution of triangle. So if you need to answer the two questions, pay, concentrate on these two topic, which is index number and solution of triangle. And remember that these four topic will not come in your paper one. So the question in part C that is given here will not come in paper one that is your index number, solution of triangle, linear programming, and motion along straight line. So it's only tested in part two, paper two, part C. Okay. Okay. You might ask what is the schedule that I will be uh, going through? How am I going to cover all the topic? We have 21 chapters from form four and form five. So I'm only going to choose 20 chapter. One chapter I'm going to leave it behind that is motion along a straight line. Anytime if you have any question on the topic, you can ask me through Facebook. OK, remember I post the question on Facebook and you can practice that before our class. I will put it up one or two days before the class so you can practice the question and on the day, I will just select some of the question of a different version, how the question will be asked to show you there's more than one way of solving it. So for tonight or for today, we are going to test on chapter one, which is function and chapter four, which is simultaneous equation. 
OK, so let's go into the chapter without further ado. OK, chapter one, what you need to know in chapter one is what is relation and what is function. And if you look back in last year's SPM paper, the first question was asked on relation. The easiest question, just need to draw the graph and find out whether the relation is a function. And the next thing that you need to know how to find inverse function. I will show another way to solve to find inverse function. Maybe you have various method to solve it. Lastly, for chapter one, you need to find composite and absolute function. OK, how many questions were they asked in your SPM paper? Normally, chapter one in SPM paper, there will be two to three questions in paper one and there'll be one question in part A in paper two. OK, and your question can be soalan kebat, higher order thinking skill. Then I will touch on chapter four, that is simultaneous equation, and this simultaneous equation only comes in paper two, one question in part A. And if you look back last year's paper, it was a direct question. So there are chances this year will be an application question. And what you need to do to solve a simultaneous equation is you'll be given all the time one linear and one nonlinear equation. So the only way to solve this is using substitution method. So right now we're going to look at some of the questions that I've selected to do for tonight and I will show you a different way of solving this. So the first question we are looking at is function. OK, so how to solve function? You might have seen from the past year books or from your teachers how to solve this question. So I'm going to use a method to solve this question and I'll tell you why this method can also be used and how easy it will be. So if you have two methods in your hand, at least you know when to use it and you have a scale of solving it more than one way. OK, for question A, you are given a function 2x minus 8. So your fx is 2x minus 8. OK, and now, sorry, mistakenly is gx because all the time they use fx. So gx is 2x minus 8. All the time when you're solving an inverse in school, you are using one method. There's another way to solve this. I'm going to use this format. So what we do is we let y equals to inverse of g. Okay. And then what we do is we bring it across. So uh, inverse function, when you bring it across, so it becomes g y equals to x. So can you see the original question is in terms of x. Now it's in terms of y. So if you are putting in terms of y, what you need to do is you need to change this function in terms of y. If it's x, it will be 2x minus 8. So if it's y, it will be 2y minus 8 equals to x. So what am I finding? I'm finding what is y. So make y as your subject. OK, so your 2y will be x plus 8. And what will be your y? x plus 8 over 2. OK, you might ask, can we use other method? Yes, its chances are there. Now I just want to add on a bit of if I ask you, this question is changed to, just they ask you to find, find out inverse of G for a value without asking this. Just find out inverse of G for a value that is given here is 10. So how we normally do it, first we find the inverse of G, then we substitute the X with 10. So what you have here is your inverse of gx as what you have done here is x plus 8 over 2. So you will find this first and then you will substitute your 10 into here to solve this. But what is another way to solve this is I'm going to show you another method. So what is my method I'm going to show? Let's say I call this another method. So I put it as method 2 without finding your inverse. 
what we do is we put y as inverse of g with 10 included. Don't forget the 10. OK, so we are not using x. We are using 10. That's what I want to find out. OK, now bring your g across. So you have g y equals to 10. OK, and what is g y? Looking at the original question. So if g x is 2 x minus 8, so g y will be 2y minus 8 equals to 10. So what do you have? 2y will be, bring it across, so it become 18. So your y equals to 9. So that means straight away you get the answer. So the inverse of g for the value 10 is equals to 9. If you are doing the other way, you will have to find the inverse and then substitute. It's the same thing. OK, so there are two ways for you to solve an inverse function. So this way of solving it will be useful if you are skipping your step, minimize and get your answer directly. OK, now part B. OK, they ask you to find G square 3P over 2 equals to 30. How do you go about solving this? OK, most of the student, OK, this is method one. Most of the student will do. You will put G and then you break it out G 3P over 2 equals to 30. So what you do is you substitute 3P over 2 into your G and then whatever the result of this, you substitute again to G and you can get the answer. But let me show another way to solve this where there is a link with part A. How is it done? So this one you can solve it on your own. So I'm going to show you the second method that you can do it. So your method two to solve question B will be, since you have G square 3 over P equals to 30. Okay, since G square, can I remove one of the G, bring it across. Yes. So you put just G 3P over 2. When you bring one of the G across, it becomes inverse. Can you see that inverse, we already solve it in the first part. We already have the inverse of G. So what you need to do is now just Replace your G with 3P over 2 for function G and replace your inverse with 30. So for your original function, so you have 2, 3P over 2 minus 8 equals to inverse of G you already found in the first part. So you have 30 plus 8 over 2. OK, so what we have here, Simplify this, you have 3p minus 8 will be 38 divided by 2 is 19. So 3p equals to 27 and p equals to 9. OK, this will be much shorter compared to this, but both methods are accepted. So not to worry which you are familiar, you want to get a shorter way of solving it, you can choose any one of a method. So normally when there's a question with part A and part B, there always a connection. So if you can see the connection, you try. If not, you do the normal way. So this is how you solve your part B. They ask you to find the value of P. OK, that is SPM 2017 paper one question 10. So it's supposed to be a direct question. Now let's look at the last year SPM paper, which have paper two question one was your simultaneous equation. As what I told you, it was given a direct question. So this year there might be an application question. So how to solve a simultaneous equation? You always given one linear and one nonlinear equation. So the first one given to you is this, this is your linear equation. Let's say I call it equation one. And your second equation, 
let's say I call this as equation two. So what you do is for solving a simultaneous equation, you 100% can solve this. If it's a direct or application, just using the linear equation, make either one of this variable to be the subject. So which is easier to make it a subject, which one is not complicated, like in this case, X. So from equation one, I make X as a subject, so you have one minus two Y, and then I substitute into equation two. So when you put it in equation two, so you have three, one minus two Y, minus two over Y equals to five. So what do you see? Your X is eliminated, so you're only left with Y. So what is my next step? We need to put it in a form that you can find your y. So what we do is we make the denominator the same and then find the value of y before we find the x. And one thing I want to em you emphasize on is the decimal. Please follow the decimal correctly. If they say three decimal, make sure your final answer is in three decimal. If not, you will not get full mark. OK, let's continue here. So make the denominator the same. So you have y, 1 minus 2y. Multiply, cross multiply as what you have done in your modern math, how to solve algebra equals to 5. OK, now this denominator bringing across. So what we have. OK, now what we need to do is we need to expand and what you will see is you might end up a quadratic equation. So let's see how is the expansion of this function. So let's expansion. But must say do the bracket first. So you have 3y minus 2 plus 4y equals to 5y minus 10y squared. So as usual, you need to derive a quadratic equation. You write from the highest order to the lowest order. So the highest order is y squared. So we have to bring all to the same side. Since it's a negative, let's remove these two terms to the same side. So what we have is 10y squared, 3y plus 4y, and when you bring across your 5, so you have plus 2y, and don't forget there's a minus 2 equals to 0. OK. Since this is an uh, equation, you want to simplify the equation before you continue. Yes, you can. So what I do is I divide everything by two. So what we have. OK, when you look at this question, this is a quadratic equation and the answer is given as three decimal. 100% this cannot be using factorization method. So what is the method we're going to use is your formula. Recall your formula, negative B, your quadratic formula. OK, so you need to know what is your A. A is the coefficient in front of your Y square. B is the coefficient in front of your y, the one with the linear power, so it's one. And C is the constant with that y that is negative one. So substitute all these numbers into here and then use your calculator. As another advice for you, during my session every week, please have a calculator in front of you so that you can do together with me at the same time solving the question. OK, so what we have. So substitute all your ABC in. So what do you have? Your B is B square. So you have one square minus four times five times negative one over two times one. OK, if you use your calculator, if you have your calculator right in front of you, OK, so if you work it out in your calculator, what you will get is, I will write the final answer. You can press this using your calculator. You work 0 0.3583. I'm putting in four decimal. I'll tell you why. And another one is all negative 0 
OK, why you need to put more than three decimal at the beginning so that when you calculate your X, you will not lose your decimal. But in your final answer, you ignore this third at uh, the fourth decimal. So it means you, when you represent your answer, you just write 0 0.358 and negative 0 0.558. But when you're doing the calculation, because we still haven't found X, so try to maintain one extra decimal and put it back into your equation. X is one minus two Y. So when you put it back into your equation, X is one minus two Y. So, sorry. Uh, I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be 5. OK, this is supposed to be 5 is 2A. So when I put it back into the equation, what I have is 0 0.283 for your X. And when the Y is negative 0 0.5583, so what you get is 2.117. So I maintain three decimal here. And when you rewrite your answer for Y, please ignore this. Delete this because this number is less than five, so you cannot round it up. So your final answer will be 0 0.358 for your Y and 0 0.283X. This is one pair. And another pair is this. Negative 0 0.558 and 2.117. OK, so way of solving this, very important. Follow the instruction very carefully, three decimal places. This is very important. If not, you will not get full mark. OK, and I tell you, when it's involved a word using decimal, 100% you cannot use factorization to solve this equation. You have to use your quadratic formula. OK. That is on simultaneous equation and it was a direct question. OK, let's look another question, a different type, where it involves absolute function. OK, look at question. This is absolute function, 1 minus 2x. And this involves some relationship between x and y exists. So what you need to do is you must know how to read the graph. OK, the graph is defined between negative 2, the point here, and 4. OK, now they ask you to find the object of 7. OK, so 7 is called the image. Remember, object is your X value and image is your Y value. So object of 7 means 7 is your image. We are really clearly the 7 is given in your graph. So what is the X value for this? So you can write the object for 7 is equals to 4. So your answer for part A, the object of 7 is equals to 4. Just read it from the graph. No other calculation to be done. OK, for part B, they ask you to find the image of 3. So you are finding what is the Y value when 3 is your X value. You are given your X value. You are given your X value, so you are finding your Y value. OK, given your X value, you are finding your Y value. So how to go about solving this? OK, you already have a function given here. So now given to you your X value, so I mean your X is three. Be careful, this line is called absolute. So one minus two times three. So what we have here, absolute, one minus two times three is negative five. So what is the absolute function mean? You know this concept, absolute function means any function, whether it's positive or negative, the end result for this will be a positive value. So the answer for this is five. OK, so that is your answer for part B. You can show a bit of working. Now part C, what is given to you this? Look at this term, this is your Y exists. So if you're given your Y value is between 0 and 5. 0 is the one touching your 
x axis and 5 is here. So what you can do is draw a line at the point 5. This is the value where y equals to 5 and this is the line for y equals to 0. So we want to know what is the x value between this. That is called the domain. OK, so one of the X values given the first X value is negative two. No problem, but how to know the second X value here? This is the extreme. So your Y is from zero to five. What will be your value of X? OK, what will be your value of X? So what we need to do here? You need to do a bit of calculation, but you no need to do at all. The answer is from your part B. Can you see in your part B, the value 5 for fx take place when x equals to 3. So we know this point is 3 and this point is negative 2. So do I need to do much working? No, you can read it from the graph. Very, This is a very direct question. It's in paper 1. You can see, so negative 2 is clearly given in the question and 3 is already given in part B. So your domain, your domain is given as your X will be between negative 2 and 3. So if you want to show a bit of working, so you are showing the same thing again. When X is 3, your value for FX is 5. And when X is uh, negative 2, your value is 5. You want to show a bit of working, you can do this. When it's negative 2, so what I have, the important in paper 1 is your final answer. If your final answer is correct, you will get the full mark. Okay? So if you want to show working to make sure your stuff is correct, so what you can do is you can show a bit of working. And F3 is very clearly seen, is already shown in your part B. So the domain will be between negative two and three. Okay, what is your X value? Domain stands for your X value. This is your range. FX is your range. So your range is given between zero and five. You want to find what is your domain. Okay, so this is a question from the chapter one, which involve absolute function. Okay, let's create a look at a question where it's involved application and this is simultaneous equation. Remember, it's always come in the paper too. So this year, there's a chance you will get an application question. Okay, what do you need to do? The triangle was not given to you. So what do you need to do is to draw a triangle because the shape is given. When it's given a shape, so it's better for you to draw it out. It's a right angle triangle. So it's a right angle triangle. Okay, so given the longest side of the length is Y. And the two other side, this is the longer side, so that's why. And the two other side, we call it as X and 2X minus 1. Okay, so what you need is you are given the information fenced. 40 meter of barbed wire. So fence means totally cover the whole thing. That is called a parameter how to find the parameter for this triangle. So parameter, you just need to add everything, all the dimension here, and that will equals to 40. So you have X, you have 2X minus one plus Y equals to 40. Okay, can we simplify this equation? Yes, it's possible. So we have three X, plus y equals to 41. This is called equation one. Can you see this is a linear equation? So 100% the second will be a non-linear equation. So mostly it's a quadratic equation. And what is the information is given here? You are not given any other information, but can you see it's a right angle triangle. What comes in your mind when you talk about right angle tri triangle is your Pythagoras theorem. What does Pythagoras theorem says? 
Okay, mind my writing. I hope you can read. Okay, according to Pythagoras theorem, when you square both the short end square and sum it up, it will be equivalent to the square of the longest length. So what we have is x square plus 2x minus 1 square equals to y square. Can we simplify this? Because we need to see the nonlinear equation before we can apply the substitution method. So what we have is Okay, and then what we do is we bring all to the same side. Maybe the constant, you can leave it over the other side. We can simplify further. So what we have is 5x squared minus 4x plus y squared equals to negative 1. So you can see a nonlinear equation in this question. So after you have from the two equation. So what is your next step here is you need to use your substitution method. So linear equation, you choose the linear equation. So your linear equation is equation one. So which is easier to make it as a topic is your y. So y is 41 minus 3x. Then you substitute into equation two. OK, what we have? Only replace your y with this. So your x remain. So you have 5x squared minus 4y plus 41 minus 3x squared. This is your y. y squared is equals to negative 1. OK, you have your calculator right in front of you. You try to expand this and simplify. I will give you what it will end up to be. So what you get here, and sorry, did I miss out something? OK, this is a negative when I bring it across. So this is a negative. So what this will end up to be, bring it all to the same side. So what you will have is negative 4x squared plus 242x plus 1680 equals to zero. Okay, what you see here is the numbers is too big. Can I simplify if it's possible? So what I do is I divide by negative two. Okay, so what you have is two x squared minus 121x minus, uh, sorry, divide by negative two, so it become 840. Okay, in this question, there is no word how many decimal. So there is a chance that this will give you a whole number, but you might be not be able to do the factorization. You can use the quadratic formula. So if you want to use your factorization, you have two methods, quadratic formula of factorization. So you will have this x minus 8, 2x minus 105. OK, so the result here, you will get 8. Here the unit are given in meters, so it's 8 meter, or you have 105 divided by 2, so that will be 52. Okay, which answer should I accept? You have not completed, so just leave the two answers. Now, what do you need to find? Your y value. So for each of these x value, you need to find your y value. So what is your y value here? So when I replace uh, x with 8, so what will be my y value is 17. When I replace X with 52.5, what will be my Y value is negative 116.5. So now tell me which one you want to choose. This is a dimension you're talking about length. A dimension cannot have a negative quantity. So this set of value is not accepted. 
OK, so your result is your X will be 8 and Y is 17. But the question have not completed because remember the word they say, find the length for each side. So we already know X, this is equals to 8. We already know this is equals to 17. So what will this be? Just replace your 8 inside. So 2 times 8 minus 1. So this will be 15. And all units are in meter. So when you write your final answer, you say the length for each will be 8. You can write in any order. Make sure the three numbers are there. You have 8, you have 15, and you have 17. That will be your final answer. So when you have two answers, be careful whether you can accept both answer depend on the question and look at the application question, whether you can accept a negative value. OK, so that is an application question. So remember this year, chances you get an application question. Just remember for simultaneous equation, you will have one linear and one nonlinear. Always use the linear equation make one of the variable as a subject and substitute in a nonlinear equation. The mistake student might do is when you are doing calculation like plus and minus like what I did, I brought it across, I forgot it's a minus. So these are the mistake people will do. So just be careful, just make sure that you have solved it correctly. If you want this question, you can find out whether your answer right or wrong by putting it back and testing whether this will be 40 meter and the Pythagoras theorem whether it's satisfied. That is how you check whether you have got the correct answer. If you have made a mistake during your calculation. OK, let's look at some other question. OK, you might ask uh, what type of question this. This is the higher order thinking skill. OK, this is called composite function. Can you see the composite function? So you have a composite function here, composite function. Now they ask you to find G square. Before I solve this question, I want to give you a bit of information on some other question. Then you have an idea how to solve this. So let's say you have a function. This is another question. Let's say you have a function x is equals to, let's say some number x plus four or five or something. I give you a simple value. Let's say we use x plus one, for example. And you are given another function which is called the composite function. Assume this is your composite function and you're given, let's say, 3x minus 2. And I have also given you another composite function, fhx, which is x squared. OK, this is not related to that question, but some concept that you might use to solve the question here. So now the question is fine. What is g and h? OK, look at GF, this first composite function here. So G is the external term, F is the internal term. Remember, when you're doing composite function, you substitute from inner to the outer function. Whereas when you're solving H, F is the outer function, H is the inner function. So this G, which is the outer function, and H, the inner function, is unknown. And we want to find this. Let me show you a method. Maybe you might have learned this method in school, but how to do it is just using this. What you need to do is find your inverse first. That's all. Find your inverse, and then we can substitute in. OK, how to find the inverse? Remember just now we did for inverse function. So we let y equals to inverse of x. Then what you have is bring it across. Okay, 
So what we have, what is your Fy? Fx is x plus 1, so Fy will be y plus 1 equals to x. So what will be your y? Is x minus 1. So this means your inverse function is x minus 1. Okay, now we need this to solve for g and h. Okay, let's do the first one for g. What is g f x is equivalent to? This can be written as g f f x. Okay, and sorry, uh, I delete this. G is equivalent to G F inverse of F X. Just G alone. What is G equivalent to, to, uh, to G times function times inverse? Why you say this is equivalent? So recall back when you have a diagram for relationship. If your first one is called X and the second is Y. If your function F from X it become Y. If you are doing inverse you will get back x. So if you have a function and an inverse together, it will give you back the same result. That means f inverse of x will end up with x. OK, so here you are writing as gx. So gx is same as gf inverse of f x. So this GF is already given to you and inverse of Fx we already found. So what you are doing here is for your GF, I am replacing this with X minus one. The inverse is X minus one. I'm going to replace this into your GF. So what we have, three, replace your X with X minus one. So what is your final result? Multiply in and simplify. So you have 3x, so you have negative 3 minus 2, so you have negative 5. That is your g. Now how about h? Okay, I will let it, this be your homework, but I will tell you how to go about how to find h, same way. What is hx? So what you can see here is you already given F H. So what we need to add on is inverse in front of this and the same result. OK, so inverse times F times here H. This will give you back your H. So what you have here is you already know what is F H. FH is given to you is X square. Replace this in your inverse. So your answer will be replace in your inverse, replace your X with X square. So you get X square minus one. OK, it's just a few steps, so I have solved the question for you. OK, now back to our original question. How to find G square? OK, so what we have is to find G square. You have to use both of this function, but the arrangement of function is very important. So what is G square? Will be you must have a G F X. And I'm using again the bracket. Let me use a different bracket G. OK, without using the word X, I'm just putting in this form. GF, replacing this into your F. OK, you have GF and inverse times G. So can you see this two will give you back your X? So what you will end up with is G square. F and inverse F will give you X, so you will end up with G square X. So what you are doing here is inverse of G, inverse of F G is given as 3X minus 2. So replace this into your G F. 
So your GF is 12X minus 8. So this is your X. Okay, so what we have is 36X minus 24, don't forget, minus A, so minus 32. So that's your answer for part A. You might be cracking your head how from these two I want to get G squared. So the concept is similar to what I've shown earlier, the same way you are replacing this into here because F inverse of F will replace back in terms of X. It's the opposite process, so you end up with G squared. Now part B, if GX is AX plus B, you ask to find the value of AB. So what we need to do is we need to find G square X. Okay, so this will be G, GX. And what is mean by GX here is given to you AX plus B. So you have G replace AX plus B into G again. So it will be A, AX plus B, don't forget plus B again, because I'm replacing the X with AX plus B. So what you end up with is A square X plus AB plus B. Now, how to find your A and B? Okay, remember in part A, I always say there's always a connection here. So in part A, you already solved this G square X. Can you compare between these two? So what you have, let me write over here. So you can see when you compare the one with X, what is the coefficient? A square equals to 36. So A will be plus minus six. But since the equation say A must be less than zero, so we take A equals to negative six. Okay, remember, A must be less than zero. Okay, now for your second part, how to find B? So look at this term. AB plus B is equals to this, negative 32. So AB plus B equals to negative 32. Sorry, the space. So we already found what is A, negative 6. So put in your negative 6 as your A, so you have negative 6B plus B equals to negative 32. So what do you have? Negative 5B equals to negative 32. So you found B is 32 over 5. Okay, so always when a question is given in few sections, there will be a connection between the sections. So if you can see, try to use the section that you have solved earlier to solve the next question. Okay, so this is one of the higher order thinking skill. You might not have come across this, so I'm just showing you an example here. Okay, let's look at the next question. Okay, this is another question in a higher order thinking skill. Okay, you normally see when you're given a function, you only say x to fx. So it's x, but now it's from 1 minus x to a plus 3x. So what, how to find the function here? That's what we want to do. Okay, so what we do is we say that h, whatever the function h here, when you have the object is 1 minus x, the result is a plus 3x. What is the next step? This is complicated, isn't it? So why don't we make it simpler? We let y equals to 1 minus x. And then we find out what is x. So x is 1 minus y. So now can I change this all in terms of y? So what do I get? 1 minus x, I replace it as y. 
8 plus 3x. What is your x? 1 minus y. So 8 plus 3 times 1 minus y. Okay, so what you end up with? So you will have 11 minus 3y. So you already have your function, but remember we need to write in terms of x. So just change it in terms of x. That answer your part A. So since you already have your function, can you find A and B? Yes, object and image. So your A will be, since your object is five, this is your image. So that means you're going to replace five into your function. So you get negative four. Okay, and how to find B? So the object is B and the image is two. So this means when I put B, my result must be two. So what is HB? HX is 11 minus 3X. So HB will be 11 minus 3B equals to 2. So what you have is bring it across. So negative 3B equals to negative 9. So B equals to 3. OK, and part C. Map onto itself. So that means HX will give you x. So if I substitute x, the final answer is x. So what is hx? 11 minus 3x equals to x. That is what it means map on itself. Whatever number you put here, the same number as your image. So now solve this. So you have bring it across. So negative 4x equals to negative 11. So x is 11 over so that is your answer for this question. So I have one more question, but since time is limited, I'm just going to give you the equation. This is an application question, okay, where you need to solve simultaneous equation. So what they ask you is, there are two different circles. So maybe you want to draw it up, no problem, one small and one big circle. Let's say the radius is R1 here and the radius here is R2. Okay, the circumference of a circle, what's the formula for a circumference? Circumference is given as two pi R. So in this question will be two pi R1 plus 2 pi r2 because the sum of circumference is equals to 40 pi. So simplify wherever possible. So what we can do is we can divide everything by 2 pi. So you get r1 plus r2 equals to 20. First equation. This is the linear equation. Now look at the second information, sum of their area. So what's the formula for area of a circle is pi r square. So what is the sum of the area of this circle? Pi R1 square plus pi R2 square equals to 328 pi. So what we have R1 square plus R2 square is 328. So equation two. So you have a linear and nonlinear. So when you solve this, you can find your R1 and R2 and you will have two set answer, but both also apply because it will change either way. So your answer is for the small circle will be 2 cm and the big circle will be 18 cm for your radius. And this answer is given in the page on the Facebook. I have uploaded this question and also I've given you the final answer. OK, so that is the section for today. Before I end today's section, Thank you for your time listening to our first class here. I hope you have some tips how to choose question in your SPM for now. The easiest question for you to choose is function and simultaneous equation, which is in paper two. As we go for the next nine way, I will give you all the other questions that easy for you to solve whether it's a direct or application question. 
OK, since next week is a public, next Wednesday is a public holiday because it's a Malaysia Day. So our next MS revision class will be on 23rd September 2020. At the same time, 8 to 9 through MS team. So what am I going to do for the next two weeks without doing any class? No, you have to do the maths. OK, so don't forget, I've given you some question and you don't stop doing more and more question. Please practice more question. That is my advice for you. And anytime you are on to ask anything, you can put it the comment on the Facebook. So good night, everyone, wherever you are. See you soon. Back to you, Sabah. Thank you, Thank so, you much, so much, Ms. Mani. And there is a few Q and A uh, questions that the student asked. But before that, I would like to play one video from our sponsors first, and then we will continue with the Q and A session. Yeah. Okay, so our session on additional mathematics has just ended. And before we end our session, I would like to read out a few questions from our students. Uh, Ms. Rani, Ms. Rani, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Um, by an anonymous student, yes. he asked, Teacher, can we simplify the final equation for functions? Simplify the final, it depends on what they ask. You can put it in the simplest form, your final answer. Okay, and then another question by an anonymous student. Can I bring in the calculator of FX570ES plus during the exam of SPM? Okay, this is depend on the rules that government apply. Right now, you are allowed to use scientific calculator, but I'm not sure whether this calculator have a graphing tool. So we need to check whether it have a graphing tool, then it's not allowed. All right. 
another question by anonymous student. When the equation can't factorize, straight away use the calculator to find the answer or we should use the formula? It's actually you're writing down the formula and then you're using the calculator. So it makes no difference unless your answer is wrong, then they will look at your working. So it's better for you to have your working display there if your final answer you make mistake by calculating. So to be on the safe side, you better have your working and then the final answer. OK. Um, other than that, uh, ma'am, a lot of uh, students have uh, said thank you so much for your time. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Thank you, teacher. OK, and thank you, everybody. Right, so with that, I think um, we can end our session for today, uh, Ms. Rani. Yes. OK, then. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Rani, for your time and your effort for tonight. I hope that uh, I hope that the students uh, have a clearer thought and explanation on the coming SPM uh, exam examination that they're going to sit down for ad additional mathematics. Sabah, there are more questions. Sir. Oh, there's more, more questions. Oh, OK. Yes. All right, uh, Ms. Rani, if you can take a look at the chat box, I'm going to publish one question. It's a additional mathematics question. OK. Uh, how do G in bracket AX plus B become A in the bracket AX plus B plus B? Uh, I didn't see your question, but you are talking about one of the examples. It was a G square. Okay. It was a G square X. They asked you to find G square X. So when you substitute G again into G, OK, it's a composite function. You substitute G again into G. Since G is AX plus B, so you replace your X with AX plus B again. So you have an A, open bracket, AX plus B, close bracket, plus B again. If you have seen my working, so it become A square X plus AB plus B. Then you do the comparison using your part A to find the value of A and B. OK, if you have further question on this, if you still don't get it, my explanation, you can write to me in Facebook. I will try my best to answer your question through using some equation or post the answer in Facebook. OK, thank you so much again, uh, Ms. Rani. Yep. All right, I have a few announcements to make. Actually, just one. Uh, um, the School Achiever Scholarship Award, which is also known as SASA Award from Health University, is available now. We do highly encourage all Form 5 leavers to submit your application through our web page. For, for, for more information, please log on to our web page to find out for more. And if you have any uh, if you have any inquiries on courses and about help university itself, please do post your questions in our Facebook or you can directly call us at our hotline. All right, so. so there will be another session tomorrow. At 8 to 9 p.m. as well. Um, in Microsoft Teams and I'm sure the links have all been um, given out. Tomorrow's subject would be on um, mathematics again from 8 to 9 p.m. All right, so whoever that's interested, please do join us in our Microsoft Teams live. With that being said, um, I would like to thank everyone again for joining. Thank you again, Ms. Rani, for your time and effort. With that, um, good night, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.